my relationship with music was I, I spent time with it. I thought deeply about it. I've listened to records thousands of times, you know, and, and I, and I, and it changed me and my appreciation of them. It's just, you know, that's a different era. That's not how it is now. But there is something to be learned from that and remembered, and I think there's value to that that we bring into some of the things we do today. Um, now we, you know, are doing a tour that is a result of us thinking quite a long time about: Do we want a tour? Um, if we do, you know, really pausing for a minute, and saying how, how would we like to tour? You know, we've played arenas many times we've played clubs we've played amphitheaters we've done a lot of festivals <clears throat> and we thought about hey playing a smaller venue where it feels intimate is kind of exciting and we're not going to tour that much we we, we are not going to endlessly tour the rest of our lives that's pretty safe to say we have families we have other things that interest us i've done it for most of my life and i'm it's not something i want to continually do so if we are going to do it Let's try to make it something that plays into this idea that um, it's more than just a thing like all the other things. How can we make that a communal experience? I miss going to Tower Records at midnight to get my, a new album I've been looking forward to. And when I'm in the store, I see a hundred other people that love the same thing I love. And they've got the same t-shirt I had on, you know? And there's a community. I love walking into Amoeba now and seeing a, a room full of people Everybody in there loves music. They're not there to buy a washing machine with some CDs in the front. They're there because they're into music. And that feels like a temple for the, for the career and the passion that's driven my entire life. I relate to music. It gives me goosebumps to think about it. It's been it's defined me. It's helped me figure out who I am. I've been able to communicate and understand myself and the world through the lens of music. There's a place you can walk into. Other people seem like they might feel that way, you know? So when we did this tour, we thought, let's try to, you know, and this was largely inspired by, we, we went and saw LCD Sound System at the Palladium, you know, who could have played the Forum, but chose to play a bunch of nights in a smaller room, and we went there and we left it was LCD. talking about it for a week. You know, we, we like LCD, but we, we were blown away by, it just and felt good, you know, and it was exciting and you could write there and everybody was into it and it felt, we thought we want to do something in the world of that where it feels like if you get in to see the show, you had a unique experience. You're in. You weren't at row a million, you know, with the security guard bitching at you because you're not supposed to stand up on, you know. Mm. So we just tried to play up the idea of this um, experience that is, isn't going to be around. And if you do go, great. And then we knew by saying, this, this is all referring to, we're saying if you want a ticket, just show up at the box office and hand somebody money and you'll get a ticket. And if you are the first person in line and you want to be in the front row, there's no bots taking those tickets. You're in line. Get it. And I, I knew that would irritate some people, and it has irritated some people. And it may not work, and it may be something that we hadn't thought of, you know. But... The idea is that, and this is kind of abstract to explain, it's part of the show. Part of the experience is getting that ticket and being around people that are also there to get that ticket, you know? And we're going to do some things we think will make that experience pretty good. We haven't spelled out yet so that you might be pleasantly surprised. And it's not as convenient, and I get it if you live in bum wherever you can't. I get I've heard, I've seen them all. I've seen all the big, you know, I get it. But I grew up in fucking bum Egypt, and I didn't get to go to shows in New York City, you know? And I missed out. I'm still pissed off. I didn't see Kiss when I was 15, you know? But I didn't get to go. Sorry about that. But um, this is just, we're going to try this. That's all. In a uh, culture now where everything's on demand and everybody's entitled to everything, some things need to feel a little more special. All, all experiences are being reduced to an online interaction. You know, there is a real world and I'm not trying to be the Luddite that's, you know, anti-technology far from it, but there is, um, there, there is a reasoning behind our madness here. We think we'll work. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, we won't do it next time. If there's a next time, so it is what we chose to do this time. And in this case, you're going to be watching Jesus and Mary chain. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, we're thinking about bands to tour with 
And um, I've always loved Jesus and Mary Chain. And I've got, I've got some history with them. We, the first real tour we ever played as Nine Inch Nails, we opened for them. It was a good place in my heart of the good old days when you know life was simpler. You know, they were cool. I love Jesus and Mary Chain, always have. A few years before that, when Psycho Candy was out, they played uh, the Fantasy Theater in Cleveland. And we were rehearsing in the Fantasy upstairs. It was a nightclub. And, um, my manager at the time's girlfriend ran the club, and that's where we would rehearse and kind of hang out. And the night of the Mary Chain show, and this is where they were only guaranteed to play eight minutes. If you remember way back, there was a frantic, they were about to go on. We were upstairs just finishing rehearsal in the closed nightclub. and. Michelle, the owner. Quick, 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 emergency. Um, do you guys have a drumstick? They only brought two and they've lost one and they're not going on if they can't <laughs> find one. We did have a drumstick, so we saved the show. Have you ever told that story? Uh, maybe I have. They also played the longest they'd ever played on that tour, which was, I think, 12 minutes. 